Yeah, we better start. Thanks for coming. Good morning, everybody. Uh, I'm Yuri. It's Daniel. Uh, we work at uh, Red Hat, and uh, we're working in the Kellner uh, real-time team. Uh, today, basically, we want to spend like 20 minutes uh, just talking a little bit about SCAD deadline, uh, which is, well, I still consider it a relatively new thing for Linux. Not really new, it's like been there for at least six years or, or something. And um, so, but the impression is that uh, maybe not so many people already know about it. Maybe some, we have some users, uh, not so many. So I guess the fir very fir first question. So the, the, this talk is uh, mostly about future stuff. So stuff that uh, we intend to implement and fix and implement, but I guess uh, it really makes sense uh, for, for the audience if uh, you actually understand what basically we're talking about. So how many of you, raise your hands please, uh, know what SCAD deadline is? Okay, so kind of half of the audience. So uh, I guess we can spend yeah, a few, few minutes maybe actually uh, with a, with a little background, but it will be quick, like five minutes and then we go, maybe we can go faster on the future stuff. I uh, just wanted to put here basically a few reference for, for you so that uh, maybe when you, when you get home and if you are still interested, you can uh, go there. So I really recommend you to, uh, I guess, to read these two LWN articles. Uh, Daniel uh, wrote that uh, last year and they basically provide you uh, both a theory uh, introduction, a theoretical introduction, and some examples on uh, how you can use this thing and why it might be uh, useful for you. And yeah, I just put here, for example, this is one of the possible use cases of this thing, which is uh, a real-time scheduler uh, implementation policy uh, for the Linux scheduler. And uh, it is uh, supposedly pretty good for all the um, periodic type of workload that actually needs some kind of uh, quality of service guarantees, let's say. Uh, it can potentially be used for uh, strict real-time uh, type of workloads, but you can, in the soft real-time use case, can actually be helpful as well. In this case, for example, this is pretty simple. Uh, I guess the example wants to tell you that uh, if you have a video processing thing that you have to execute uh, every uh, 16 milliseconds, because maybe you have a frame rate of, let's say, 60 hours, you can, in principle, tell the scheduler, okay, I really want uh, you to reserve this 60 millisecond every uh, the 60 millisecond, every 60 millisecond you want to reserve me five milliseconds of time that I can spend uh, executing my stuff. And then uh, after that, uh, basically that's, uh, uh, the scheduler will make sure that you have, can execute the thing. So yeah, this is basically how can you can use it. And uh, yeah, maybe you can, yeah, we can go. Okay, uh, we use this. Uh, it works? The, does it work? Okay, good. So just to trying to simplify why do we care about SCAD deadline and why people try to use this, this feature. Let's suppose that we have a, a system with uh, three tasks that uh, one task runs one unit of time every four, the other two units of time every six, and the last one three units of time every eight units of time. So if we compute the utilization of the system, it will be very close to 100%. So the system will be very low. So if we try to assign the priorities in the best way using the rate monotonic, which is, there is a theory that explains that why it's the best way, this task set saying, okay, this is my highest part one, this is the second highest and the third, this task set is not schedulable within the deadlines using the fixed priority, which is the SCAD 5 scheduler. While if we put this very low task set on the SCAD deadline, in a single CPU, you, we can make it. <coughs> so there is a property of the SCAD deadline that says us that for a single CPU case, or for a one single queue for each CPU, we can schedule up to 100% of time of the tasks. 
while meeting all their deadline. And that's why we try to chase using more SCAD deadline. And that's why, even though it's not as simple as the SCAD FIFO, we spend some time working on it. Okay, yeah, I guess uh, the other thing is basically, the basic idea is that uh, if you uh, if you have like uh, a workload composed of multiple threads and you want to consolidate those threads in the in less amount of CPUs, that might be one way to do it, just because it gives you uh, this type of quality of service guarantees. Anyway, um, hopefully that gave you a little bit of introduction. And again, if you if you want to know more, please uh, reach us after the talk and. Uh, uh, maybe have a look at the links that I share in the first slides. Um, what we want to actually go through quickly today are the uh, things that uh, we are working on. Uh, so what we have in Linux, it's already useful, but it's really the, the base. Uh, and there are few things that uh, need to be uh, fixed and a few things that we want to introduce to potentially make this thing more uh, useful for, for everybody. Um, okay, let's start with the, uh, the first thing. So uh, this is about uh, priority inheritance. So hopefully uh, you're already uh, aware of this problem. It's a classic real-time uh, system problems when you have uh, multiple uh, tasks with potentially different deadlines that actually work on a share uh, data and then they use a mutex. And uh, priority inheritance solves uh, problems with the uh, uh, priorities of these, uh, these tasks. So uh, currently, we have uh, a priority inheritance mechanism implemented, which is uh, deadline inheritance. So deadline uses deadline, dynamic deadlines to actually uh, schedule tasks. So the priority is basically the deadline. And, uh, the way it works is basically the uh, the task with the, the the closest, so that the highest priority task will uh, 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 give the deadline, the current deadline, to the uh, mutex owner when uh, it uh, it blocks on the mutex. Uh, unfortunately, currently this is uh, well. Let's say that it's slightly incorrect. There are uh, known pro uh, problems and bugs with the actual inheritance thing, and the actually the the most worrisome part is that uh, to make it work, we, uh, we needed to um, basically uh, relax the runtime enforcement uh, property or deadline when uh, the priority inheritance is in act. Uh, actually, this is uh, the other nice feature of, of SCAD deadline. So it's not only that uh, the task has schedule consider, considering uh, dynamic deadlines so that we can reach a higher uh, CPU utilization, but we actually enforce that the task cannot execute for more than uh, he actually requested to the system. So the runtime I showed you in uh, the very first slide, so that five milliseconds is that amount, uh, that amount of time the task can actually execute, but if you try to execute for more than that, it will be stopped, so that will be enforced, so that other tasks are not uh, jeopardized in their execution. And uh, yeah, so if the task is actually priority boosted, this part of the enforcement doesn't, is not actually working anymore, so the, the task can actually execute for more than what requested to the system. And that, of course, can be a problem. So what we are working on, there are already patchy bit posted uh, as RFC on the Linux kernel mini list, is uh, what we call priority inheritance. And basic, the basic idea uh, would be to inherit the full uh, runtime over period property of the uh, task donor. So uh, when a higher priority task blocks on the mutex, he has, uh, and it, it is a desk deadline task, he already has a runtime over period uh, couple, and that thing has to be inherited by that are currently holding the mutex. So with that, we can uh, keep the runtime enforcement enabled and, uh, and basically solve the problem in a more general way, in a more safer way. Basically, what we, le what we want is to let the mutex owner execute using the scheduling context of the potential several donors. Uh, next slide should clarify what I mean by scheduling context. So this is the, 
uh, a simple uh, example of what might happen on a single CPU. You have uh, three tasks. Uh, there is a very low priority task, so this task is activated at this instant in time, and he has uh, an absolute deadline, which is pretty far in the future. Then it actually shares a, a resource uh, protected by mutex A uh, with this higher, highest priority task, this higher priority just because it's uh, absolute deadline in this uh, instant, let's say, of time is the uh, closest one, so it's uh, the earliest one. Uh, what happens is that, uh, what we want is that at the moment in time where this highest priority task blocks on mutex A, it actually uh, can so th this guy can inherit the properties of the highest priority task, so that if a medium priority task that uh, doesn't have to, doesn't share anything with the other two comes and uh, starts ex executing at this uh, moment, it doesn't preempt the uh, lowest priority task so, and so that uh, the highest priority one can actually uh, finish executing in time. Uh, this is basically what I meant by saying that we want to inherit the scheduling context of the, of the uh, highest priority task, so the donor. Uh, we can actually, so if you look at the SCAD uh, uh, or the task struct, you can uh, potentially divide the information that we have inside there uh, between the scheduling context and execution context. So the scheduling context is basically what you need to actually implement uh, a scheduling policy. For example, I'd say, for example, for RT, it's uh, almost basically uh, only the, the, pro the, the priority of the task. And for deadline, we have, uh, as I said, the runtime and period. So the, the information that the scheduler needs to actually know what to do and uh, which task has to, has to run at uh, every moment in time. So basically, with the mechanism, we'll be um, inheriting this, this information here, but still using the execution context to actually uh, make the task run. So, for example, if the affinity of uh, this task was uh, uh, only uh, considering one CPU, the task won't be able to run, for example, on the affinity of the highest priority task. So we just inherit part of the information uh, that there, there is, uh, uh, it is attached to this task over here. It's kind of, yeah, I guess, if, if, as you can imagine, it's kind of tricky to implement, so uh, there will be a little time to uh, make it work reliably, but uh, we are working on it. Okay, next thing is, uh, yeah, C-group support, and um, this is, uh, so currently this deadline has no C-group support at all. Uh, what we want to do, I'll try to go a little faster, is to uh, both uh, implement uh, uh, let's say not hierarchical uh, group support, uh, which means that basically the admission control uh, will be uh, performed, will be, uh, the user can be performed also uh, among group of tasks, which might be useful if you have multiple users on your system. Currently it's really a per task thing. And the, so it's pretty much uh, using uh, something like the RT group SCAD, uh, which is already in there for FIFO. Uh, but uh, the, uh, the next thing, which is the, uh, probably the most interesting thing, will be to be able to have uh, a two-level scheduler. So be able to uh, group, uh, well, in this case, FIFO task, but can be potentially also CFS task inside data line reservation. And that's nice because then you have the properties of the deadline entities. So the fact that they have uh, guarantees, guaranteed quality of service uh, uh, implementation, but extend those at group of tasks. So, if, for example, if you have a, a group of uh, tasks, for example, pipeline of tasks that uh, all have to perform uh, one thing, so you have uh, an end-to-end -end deadline. With this, this way will be probably simpler to, to actually make use of deadline, just because you don't have to assign different deadlines to each of your, uh, of the task that, that basically creates your uh, pipeline, but you're gonna say one single thing for the, for the whole set. Okay, that's. So, continuing the same idea of trying to place deadline tasks 
or trying to place other tasks inside the deadline task, we have the real-time throttling. <coughs> In such a way to avoid the starvation of no real-time tasks, uh, we have a mechanism which is the real-time throttling that reserves by default 95% of the time for real-time tasks, both deadline and sched FIFO, leaving us space for the no real-time tasks to run. The problem with these, the, the current approach is that if we don't have tasks, the system goes idle. And many people don't want to have their real-time tasks waiting while the system is idle, right? And uh, so the idea <coughs> is to bring the deadline scheduler to the root of all these schedulers and uh, generalizing the, the, con the, the context that uh, you just explained. Like having a deadline scheduler in the base with one reservation for running deadline and schedule FIFO tasks <coughs> and another reservation for the normal tasks <coughs> while allowing to the other schedulers to reclaim some space. Right? So rather than going idle, if the normal, uh, normal tasks uh, just uh, run just for a short period, we can reclaim the time for the other schedulers. Peter is a fan of this approach, and he is suggesting this. And he also started doing a, a pet set that he shared with us, and uh, it works fine. The only problem is that when we have a deadline scheduler, we are not sure <coughs> of uh, which task has <coughs> the, the highest priority always. Currently, in the way that we place the peak next, next CPU, we have the SCAD deadline as the highest priority scheduler, then SCAD FIFO, and then SCAD normal. But when we put them inside a container with SCAD deadline, the, the order in which we will execute these schedulers will depend on the deadline of the reservation. So if we have two, let's say two deadline tasks, with the same period of one, one millisecond, which is the default case on Linux, if they two start at the same time, this is a feasible scheduler because both have the same deadline, so I can ex start executing the real time first and then the normal. But we can also have in the normal, the normal uh, scheduler starting to execute before the real time scheduler. And that's not the behavior that everybody wants. So this idea is promising. It resolves a problem, but we need to analyze it better to avoid such problems. Maybe not using the deadline as the scheduler, but using the, uh, another kind of scheduler based on deadline, which is the least lex the first, or the EDSAL. So the idea is good, but we need to be sure that we will not mess up with the current behavior, right? And, um, Another topic that we might chase in the near future is improve the schedulability of the multi-core behavior of SCAD deadline. Uh, the SCAD deadline, it's, or the EDF schedulers, they are good for the single CPU case and they are optimal in the single CPU case. In such a way, in, in the, it means that we can execute 100% of time of deadline tasks. But when we go for a global scheduler, that is, one single queue for all the CPUs, we have some anomalies that <coughs> involving large tasks, which is very unlikely to, to have on a system, but still they exist, in which the system does not, does not schedule as much as possible. For example, let's say that we have this task with a six unit of time over nine, and another six over nine, and one four over nine. You see here, we have a three units of time available here, three here, so, we could, there is space to place these four, these four units of time to run here. But as they have the same deadline, doesn't matter the way I put here with global scheduler, I cannot schedule them without missing the deadline. And uh, <coughs> this is a known, uh, let's say, not a problem, but uh, a, a, a soft problem with global, let's say. So, when we start having big tasks, the schedulability of the global EDF is not that good. But we have other ways to schedule the, the tasks over the CPUs, which is, one way is, when we receive a task, we have one scheduler per CPU, one EDF scheduler per CPU, and we call this partition. 
when we, we will run out of the deadline, I'm sorry. <laughs> when we receive a task, rather than having one queue, we have one queue per CPU, and we place that task on a single CPU and let it run there, and we call this partition. And usually, using some heuristics like uh, best fit and worst fit, with partition the scheduler, we can generally schedule a more task set than global. But there are cases in which the, the partition the scheduler by itself would not work as well, which is this case. Like if I try to put, place this task here, it would not schedule. <clears throat> so there is one theory, which is the, the same partition the scheduler that is this, the, this line is the one that schedules more that works as follows. So first I try to place each task on a single CPU, and when I don't have more space available, I split the, the rest of the tasks, like shortening the deadline, and placing it uh, part of the, of the task in one CPU, and the rest of the task on the other CPU. <coughs> and then we have a feasible scheduler. And this is the good point about the, the same partition. And even in the multiple, ca multiple core cases, we can reach uh, a scalability of around uh, 80 or 90% of CPU time, which is more than enough for the Linux case. Okay, uh, how much time do we have? Uh, it's already question and answer. Okay, so yeah, I'll just skip this. Um, and uh, yeah, I just want to mention before going to questions that uh, we are actually organizing in PISA that th this year will be the fourth year where uh, we have this little summit, it's like a really a small thing with 50 people, but it's really focused on the scheduler and power uh, management issues, like all this stuff will probably be discussed about more than that. And please have a look at the side where we have uh, the uh, articles of what happened in the last three years. Uh, and please uh, come if you are interested in discussing this thing. It's, uh, we have several maintainers and really uh, deep dive and, and focus. So yeah, thank you, and if you have questions, we are happy to answer. Yeah, yeah I guess it was a kind of tough thing to, 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 <coughs> digest, yeah, to digest if you, <laughs> but anyway, uh, please uh, come to us if you are in, yeah. interested in, in this thing. Okay, thank you. Compliment. <laughs>